early Sunday morning on the island of Oahu. On a hilltop, Uncle Sam lay fast asleep, warned of the fire that was licking across the oceans from without, warned of the dangers that were threatening from within, tired from wrangling with his conscience and fatigued after a long, dark night full of disturbing events, as indeed the year 1941 was, he slept in the early Sabbath calm. Safe and secure behind its military and naval ramparts, the city of Honolulu, like many another unsuspecting American community, was also asleep. At all the Army and Navy establishments on the island, after repeated warnings from the War and Navy departments, a number one alert had secretly been in effect for 11 days. This alert provided suitable defense against possible acts of sabotage and uprisings within the island itself, but made no provision against attack or invasion. At Hickam Field, the Army's bomber base, precautions were taken to safeguard the equipment against sabotage. Hence, on this Sunday morning, the planes were concentrated in hangars or lined up row by row on the open field. Immediately adjacent to Hickam Field is Pearl Harbor, the Navy's hundred million dollar fist. Here on this morning of a tragic day of reckoning, capital ships, heavy and light cruisers lay at anchor. At anchor too lay several destroyers, tenders, minesweepers, and repair ships, 86 vessels in all. By seven o'clock, the city began to stir. For the most part, the atmosphere was serene and quiet. At Hickam Field, ground crews were at work. On a dock in Pearl Harbor, a few Blue Jackets idled away a few minutes. At Kaneohe, a field mass was being held. Shipmates, today is the third Sunday of Advent, the 7th of December, which means that Christmas is not far ahead. I don't have to remind you fellows that uh, the old Lurleen is about to shove off, carrying Christmas gifts and letters to the home side. Why not buy them a few presents? Might get them, uh, get mother a pakaki lay, or little sister a hula skirt. I think they'd rather have something for little Johnny out here in Hawaii. This is the time when you're going to be missed. So send them a present for Christmas. But that letter is so important, however. Don't put that off. A few minutes past seven, an incident occurred at a temporary Army aircraft warning station. This station, as indeed the entire aircraft warning system, had officially closed at seven. But Private Joseph L. Lockhart, who had been receiving training here, was granted permission to remain at the station. While listening, he discovered something coming over the detector that alarmed him. He listened intently. Then, certain of his findings, he called the Central Information Center. An inexperienced lieutenant answered the phone. Excuse me, sir, this is Private Lockhart. I believe a large flight of planes are approaching slightly east of north of Oahu at a distance of about 130 miles. Uh, must be our own. We're expecting some B-17s from the mainland. Thank you, sir. This incident, where it acted upon, would have given our forces brief but precious time for defense action and may have considerably affected the events of this fateful day. Regrettably, Private Lockhart's warning went unheeded. It was 7.50 a.m. by the clock on the Aloha Tower when the drone of planes was faintly heard. Out of the misty Pacific skies, like tiny locusts, they swarmed in from the sea. From the south. From the southeast.
this very moment on a quiet Sunday afternoon in Washington. Japan's smooth-talking, grinning envoys, Nomura and Kurosu, were blandly delivering to Mr. Hull a lengthy protestation of Japan's peace intentions. Yes, at this very deceitful moment, about 200 of Japan's messengers of death swooped in over our Pacific paradise. On they came, wave after wave, boldly, fearlessly. They had little to fear. They knew that our task forces were at sea, and they knew their disposition. They knew that no long-distance airplane reconnaissance, no inshore airplane patrol was being maintained. They knew from detailed maps they carried with them the exact location of vital airfields, hangars, and other structures. Each was given a specific objective, and straight toward that objective he came. Yeah. 